gonna show you a few things in terms of adding handles. First of all, if your project is really dry, you can re-wet it. You can take wet paper towels and put them on the rim. So when I came in this morning, my project, even though they were in plastic bags, they'd been sitting all weekend and they were pretty dry. So it's gonna be important to me that I add a little bit of moisture before, um, before I add the hint. You can do the same thing if you wanna trim something. But what you wanna be careful about is that you don't get it too wet. You don't wanna go from really dry to really wet and possibly cause cracking. All right, so I'm simply gonna put some wet paper towels on there. I'm also gonna be careful that I don't cause a puddle to form either on the inside or even on the outside where it's rusting because I don't want to sit in a puddle and start to break down, kind of like if you have dry dirt outside and it rains and it turns into mud, the same thing can happen to your project. Okay, then it's gonna suck up the moisture. As, it, um, as the paper towels dry, I can simply take my sponge and dab it like this, my wet sponge, in order to add moisture. Okay, so I'm gonna set that aside in the plastic bag to, to get wet again. I'm gonna take my, um, actually let me, we're gonna talk about different handles today. So you can put handles on mugs, you can put handles on bases, um, and there are certain looks to different types of handles. So this one is called a pulled handle. I'm gonna show you that last because it's the most complex. Um, this one is made out of coils, and this one is made out of a few coils combined to create that twist. On the bases that I have over here, this was actually made out of slabs where she just cut strips and then added them. But this could also be created by pulling and also by any of the other techniques that are going to show you. This has two short handles and they are also made from pulling handles. All right, so I want you to see those because there are all these different shapes that you can create. Even this type of a handle or that's so small and just kind of circular, could be used on a mug. I've seen plenty of those before. But the one thing that you want to keep in mind is that your clay is going to shrink. So if this fits your finger perfectly when it's when it's in this form, when it's leather hard, remember that it's going to shrink during the bisque fire process, it's going to shrink during the glaze, glazing process, and so you want to leave a little bit of a gap there. You want it to be a little bit bigger than you want it to end up. Alright, so let's start with some basics in terms of um, the handle. One thing that's very useful is making a coil, and I know this sounds ridiculous because you've probably been making coils since you were a little kid, but the trick to making a good coil is really using your whole hand from the bottom of your palms to the tips of your fingers. If not, if you just have kind of little short movements, what will happen is that you'll get this little twisted over, messed up little coil. But that happens, just push it and start over. So again, exaggerate that movement. If it, if it ends up kind of tall, on one side, just tap it and make it a little more round. Kind of start in the middle and work your way out. Okay. I don't need quite that much for a handle. I'm going to tear a little bit off. And I'm going to roll this until it looks like it's an even thickness. Are you kidding? Okay, once I have that, then I can cut at either end to get a good, um, good shape. Then I'm going to take a look at my mug and I'm going to try to decide where I want it to be placed. So if you have an area that's a little bit um, uneven or maybe a little bit marked or something like that, that's a good place to put your handle because it will disguise those slight imperfections. So take a look for that. And then we're going to take a look at the shape of our handle. And before we attach it, we want to simply look and see if it's going to fit. So that's a pretty big handle for this mug. Right? So I know that it would be a good idea to cut off a little bit. Even after I cut it off, I want to think about it. So I want to think about the shape that it's creating. I want to think about um, if, if it's just kind of a half circle like that, it's, it's going to um, kind of fit with the mug itself. But if I let it fall down, look at how all of a sudden my mug looks kind of heavy. It looks droopy. Even though it's light, it's just going to have this illusion of being heavy. So I want to think about the shape of the handle by simply pushing it up and giving it a little bit of a curve upward or having it in kind of a half circle, it's gonna give it that illusion of height. Okay, so if I'm gonna attach it a coil built handle, first now, especially now that I messed with it so much, I wanna make sure that it's nice and smooth and that all the weird little bumps and things are out. And then I'm also gonna give myself a little bit of a puddle of water. If your clay is really um, wet, you can simply add a little bit of water to it and it will be enough for it to stick. If it's started to dry, you're going to do something called score and slip, which is something that we're going to cover later. 
So this coil, I'm going to take it, I'm going to tap it into the puddle, and I'm going to tap it down. So that's going to make it flat, and it's also going to make it a little bit thicker. I'm going to put it onto my mug where I'd like it placed, and I'm going to wiggle a little bit. That's going to do two things. It's going to make it stick because it's a little bit sticky, and it is also going to make it a little bit thicker where it, where it touches the, um, the mug. I want it to be a little bit thicker so that it's strong when I use it. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing to the other end, just kind of get the button and tap it, and then put it in place where I'd like it to be. Okay? So that's one type of handle. Alright, another thing that I can do with the basic coil is create kind of the illusion of the pulled handle. And to do that, I'm simply going to take um, my fingers and my sponge and kind of tap it down a little bit and make it relatively flat. So I'm going to pay attention to the sides, both sides, and again make it kind of flat, but at the same time I'm, keep, I'm keeping the curve of the sides. So it's somewhat flat, but with a little bit of a curve. Then when I place it on here, I'm going to again think about the curve that I want it to make. Do I want it to be that half circle or do I want it to kind of look like this? I do. I'm simply going to place it up on an angle like this. And then I'm going to take a little bit of water on my fingers and I'm going to just sort of pull it a little bit. I can also put an extra drop, drop of water at the top, push it on to make sure that it's really stuck. And then I can pull it around and I'm going to look at where I want it placed. So I'm going to decide if I put it out like this, it's going to be really big. Is that what I want it to look like? Do I want it to be shorter? And, and, and I'm just going to kind of think about that. The other thing I want to consider is that I don't want my handle to touch the table, the bottom. Because otherwise when I use it, every time I set it down, I'm going to hit that handle and potentially knock it off. So I wanted to have a little bit of a gap from the tabletop up. I'm also going to look at it from this direction. And from, so I'm going to look at it from the side, I'm going to look at it from above, and I'm going to make sure that it's aligned where I'd like it to be. Then I'm going to cut off a little bit of excess, or I could do something like I could turn it into a little swirl, or sometimes I'll add a little ball of clay. You can decorate it and end it in any way that you would like. Again, a little drop of water at either side, push it to make sure that it's stuck, and then I'm done with that one. Okay. The other thing, oh, you know what? Notice too that I didn't smooth it in, both with the coil and with this one, I didn't blend it in. The reason being is that my mug has dried and therefore shrunk a little bit. My handle is going to dry at a different rate and it's going to shrink. So if it's if it's if there's a little bit of a gap in the handle, then as it shrinks, it's not going to show. But if I blend it in, then there will be a crack that's visible um, along along that seam. I want to make sure that I don't do that. Okay, so that's another kind. One more kind using coils is a twist. And there's a little bit of a trick. So what we're gonna do is take our clay and we're gonna roll out three coils, not two. So, so often we think of a twist being a, a twist between two different pieces, in this case, pieces of clay, but it's gonna help us if we have three. I wanna roll them out. I wanna make them all the same thickness from one end to the other. And I also want them a bit on the thin side because combined, the three of them are going to make the handle. Okay, so I'm going to take these. This is long, so I'll cut it in half. And I'm going to put two together. And I'm going to put a little bit of water to make them sticky, and then I'll pinch it to make sure that they're stuck. I want to make sure that there's a little bit of water on top before I add my third coil. When I add this, I'm going to start at one end and kind of push to the other side so that I'm not trapping air. And I'm going to tap the whole thing together a bit to make sure that it's stuck. Then I'm simply going to go like this. So I can have a loose coil, I'm sorry, a loose twist. Or if I want to, I can keep going and have a really tight twist. And similar to the single coil that I made before, I will have a little bit of water, tap it down to make it a little thick, put it on, review how long it is, see if I need to cut a little bit off, tap that end, 
and put it on. Okay? So that's the trick to the twist. One thing that you should know about this and anything else really is that if you have those little surface cracks that are in between, you can take a wet paintbrush and just kind of rub it like that. So we always want our projects to look polished and finished. And sometimes it's tough to get our fingers in there because the details are smaller than our fingers. So you can take the wet paintbrush and just kind of smooth it out within the coil, within the twist. Okay? All right, and then the last one that I want to show you is a pulled handle. And again, that one's a little, a little more difficult, but I, I've, I've seen what you can do and I know that you can handle it. So that's why I'm showing it to you. It's going to help if I start out with kind of a, a little bit of a coil, but where it's almost a wedge shape, where it's a little bit thinner down at one end than it is at the other. So I'm going to start like this, and then we're going to head over to the sink over here. So what I'm going to do, what I've done is started a coil and I'm going to simply finish the shape with some water. So I'm going to control it by keeping my fingers very narrow and thin and I'm simply going to run my hand over it a couple of times on either side. Each time I do it I'll get my hands wet until I have it nice and thin. Now when I do this, one of the things that's harder than it looks is that sometimes you get a little skinny part that just sort of breaks off or, or looks a little... Um, it doesn't match the rest. So if something like that happens, just tear it off and keep going. And if necessary, you can always pull more down from the top. The way that we get that little groove is simply by taking your thumb and kind of sliding it down the center, and then you have your handle. So I can either take my thumb and tear off the excess or my needle tool and cut it. Then I wanna just kind of make the end look nice. And then similar to that other coil, I'm gonna put it on, drop of water, pull it up, over, and position it where I'd like it to be, okay? I'm gonna check it from, from the top, from the side, from all different angles. And then I wanna make sure that it's held in place. So I'm actually gonna take a paper towel and from the top where it has that un uneven edge, I'm gonna tear a strip. And then I'm gonna use this to hold my handle in place while it's drying. So I'm gonna take the paper towel on the bottom. I'm gonna take my wet sponge and make it stick. I'm gonna put it right side up. I'm gonna check again and just make sure it looks the way I'd like it to look. And then I'm gonna pull my, my paper towel up and over into the inside. Then I'm gonna use my sponge to wet the paper towel and hold it on the inside. So notice that although this is picking up a little bit of moisture, it's, it's pretty dry. So you wanna keep this part dry so the handle can, can um, dry out and then where you want it to stick, both at the bottom and on the inside it's wet. Okay, any questions? Thank you.